Well, hey guys, welcome back to the bench. Today I have this little vacuum tube or valve amplifier. Bought this off of Craigslist for $10. So I figured it'd be something interesting to try out. It does seem to work just fine. It also seems to be modified. And somebody added this RCA jack for the input, speaker terminals. I can tell this choke wasn't original because these holes aren't really drilled straight. On the inside here, not a lot going on, but new capacitors and resistors. The power supply section looks fairly original, I guess. Solid state rectifier. Using my diode function on the meter, I, I got 0.5 volt diode drops, so they are silicon diodes inside there. I'm not clear on this output tube. I think it's a 6V6. You know, that's the most common closing matching tube. I, there are no numbers on this tube. It just says Sylvania around the base here. This is a 6SF5 metal encased tube. Of course, we have the uh, ripple filter cap and, again, the uh, rectifier. Not sure if the light here was added. The switch looks original. Volume control works. A couple ports here. I'm not sure what was there. Kind of curious if anybody would know what this thing is out of. Maybe an old record player or something. Probably not a radio. Those usually had the amplifiers together. Well, uh, some consoles had the RF and the amplifier separated. But, uh, yeah, be interesting to know what this is out of. Well, these things were made before my time. I kind of like them. It's kind of a nostalgic feeling. My grandparents, who are long gone, you know, they had tube equipment. I remember their old record players and radios when we visited their house. And there is arguments on... Uh, tube sound and how it sounds better. I can see that with guitar players where they want to change that signal by adding distortions and things. And I think a lot of the resurgence of tubes has to do with guitar players. Somehow it kind of folded over into audio. But some people will argue that they like their tube sound better. You know, this is a single-ended Amplify, uh, class A type amplifier and you know doesn't have a lot of feedback so it's going to change the sound quite a bit. It doesn't have a lot of damping factor either. So it's going to allow the speaker to sound differently than on a solid state amplifier that you know those tend to have very high damping factors. And there is argument even from engineers that some types of speakers will benefit by being driven from a, a low power factor amplifier. So what I'm going to do is hook this up, uh, give a little music listening through it. Of course you really can't get the full effect from the camera, but I'm going to you know, give my opinion of it, we'll hook it up to the scope and get some measurements and all that good stuff. And uh, before that, I will get a schematic. I'll reverse engineer it and draw the schematic. And with video editing magic, I'm back already with a schematic. So here is the power supply section with various filtering along the way. There are some parts I could not get the values of. You know, I'm not going to unsolder this inductor. I'm not going to you know, take the capacitor out inside. You know, it has stuff soldered right to it and I really can't move it from its position, so I don't want to tear the amp apart to get those values. You know, it's just power supply stuff. But I was able to get everything for the amplifier itself. And it appears to be, you know, just an ordinary amplifier with a output beam pentoed. If that's the 6V6, I think it is. And the 6SF5 high mu triode. Looks to be a little bit of feedback going on here. 
They're running the thing at 34 milliamps. And looking at the tube data sheet, it might be a little on the cool side. A little bit lean there on the current. The uh, screen grid is running at about 3, 3.3, 3.5 milliamps. Plate supply is 222 volts. So running this at a fairly low voltage, at a fairly low current, the output power is not going to be super high. I, I would expect to be in the 2 to 3 watt range. But, of course, we'll measure that and see what the actual power is. So, as usual, we'll have the music player feeding the preamp. And the input goes here. I don't think the music source has enough voltage to drive this amp. The amp doesn't have a lot of gain, so... As usual, I will use the preamp, which I have to do most of the time anyway. Okay, I plug the amplifier in and I'll turn it on. I have the kilowatt set to measure the wattage, so watch what happens. So the, the wattage will start out higher. Cold filaments, it went 38 down to 22. It's dropping down, leveling out. Now watch when the two bias comes up, starting to come up now, and it'll level off at around 28. And the little pilot light's going. One thing I've noticed, this tube amp is very quiet, no hum at all, no buzzing or humming, so it's good shielding, good power supply filtering, which is paramount importance in a single-ended class A amp. So uh, at least that part has been well engineered by whomever hacked the thing or potentially the original design as well. Okay, I'll get some music on here and see what it sounds like. And there you go, there's some period appropriate music for this amplifier. However, And there you go, some ACDC. Forget about the check, we'll get Bill to pay. Have a drink on me. Okay, I have the 8 ohm load resistor connected. 
and we'll get a max power before clipping. By the way, I think the sound sounds pretty good. When I crank it up, I do notice uh, the bass seems to kind of get a little gnarly or just distorted, whatever you want to call it. But other than that, it seems okay. Okay, let's get a measurement. So it's clipping. It's kind of hard to get the exact point before clipping. Just kind of guess here. 4 volts RMS. I will run with that. Well, 4 squared is 16 divided by 8, so 2 watts. Getting 2 watts out of this thing. Let's check the distortion. That little bump is the 1% 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal, as usual in my test. About half a graticule, so 2, 4, 6. And about 7% of a second harmonic and 7% of a third harmonic. Now with these single element class A type amplifiers, they tend to get a lot less distortion when you turn the amplitude down. So I'll do that now and see how it performs. Turn that down. Try right there. And yes, uh, the, again, this is the 1% pilot signal. I had to turn it up because these are a lot smaller now. So they're well under a percent now for the second and third harmonic. Pretty doubtful those would be audible in any sort of music. Okay, this is 10 to 100 hertz. And we're at 20 hertz now. And it's not quite all the way up it'll hit this top graticule here well the second from the top and it's a little bit distorted it cleans up around 40 hertz or so and our 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep you can see we peaked a little bit and now we're starting to fall off 10 kilohertz not much really but it is falling off one thing I noticed when the signal is on the power draw actually drops the signal is off and it goes up to 28 signal is on and it drops by about a watt I guess maybe the signal has a little effect on the bias and it might shift it somewhat I guess that's why it's doing that so what's causing the roll off probably the transformer well, I can't show you, but if I look in the side there, I can see the laminations, and they're fairly thick laminations, kind of like what's on a power transformer. And well, at higher frequencies, you'll get more heating due to the eddy currents. Well, here is a higher quality transformer, though it looks kind of messy. It has very fine laminations. I don't know if I can get a good focus on that or not much finer and it also has what's known as Litz wire I believe it's pronounced the wire is very fine and each individual strand is enamel coated I can't really get a well maybe a little bit okay there's a better focus and all the strands are wound together and the primary is wound that way and that should also help with the high frequency response and there's methods of winding these things to make them better you know I wouldn't expect you know this is probably just a consumer record player amplifier or something you know they didn't go overboard with a fancy transformer I mean it, the rule off wasn't really severe so you know it does the job 
Bass was a little bit distorted though, up to around 40 or 50 hertz. That might be the distortion I'm hearing from the lower bass notes. A lot of tube amps with external speaker connections will have multi-taps on the secondary. You have a common, a 4, 8, and 16 very often. So you can match the amplifier's output with the impedance of your speaker. Well, this one just has one. It was probably in some sort of cabinet with you know a built-in speaker so it didn't need taps. So I don't know what the actual output of this amplifier is, so I put a forum load. And if there's an impedance mismatch, we will lose our output. So let me adjust this again. So there's clipping. And I'll turn that down to where we get a nicer looking signal. Eh, right around there. 2.45. Square divided by the forum loads. One and a half watts. So we did lose output power with the forum load. And if we look at the sweep, I bet it rolls off harder. Yeah, it is rolling off quite a bit more than the 8 ohm load. Well, there you have it. A little 2 watt single-ended tube amplifier. I think it's a neat little amplifier and it was fun to put it on the bench and test. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.